Trevor Joe here, and this is by Stealth and C, a game designed by David Thompson and Nicola Sagini. And this is a solitaire game that can be played with more than one player cooperatively. And this game traces the history of the Decima Flotiglia Mas, which was a specialized unit of the Italian Navy that uh, used commandos in attacks against the Royal Navy. This particular game focuses on attacks by frogmen using manned torpedoes. The unit also uh, used speedboats to uh, commit other attacks and what they're called uh, gamma frogmen. And this is a game that is solitaire. You play against the system and you control the manned torpedoes. And in each scenario, there's three of them. And each manned torpedo is crewed by two commandos. And the game brings uh, commandos that historically participated with the unit and in the missions. Now, instead of explaining the rules, I will play one full mission of this game. And it will be the first mission that you find in the playbook which is the attack on Gibraltar. It's mission BG2 on the 30th of October, 1940. And this particular scenario, even though it's the first one in the playbook, is a difficult one. So uh, you start off with a very difficult mission. And I say that to not discourage any uh, players or people who have the game that play their first couple of missions uh, using this scenario and uh, completely fail. So this is a tough mission, but we will check first uh, how the SLCs operate. SLC means in Italian Saluri Alenta Corsa, slow running torpedo or manned torpedoes. And in the game, these torpedoes are represented by counters on the map. And the counters have two sides, they're front or surfaced side and when they are submerged you flip them to their back or submerged side and of course while surfaced these torpedoes move uh, more rapidly across the board and the downside is that they're easier to detect than when they are submerged the downside for being submerged is that they move more slowly so the players in this game have to contend with the harbor defenses and the harbor defenses are represented by patrol craft and here you see the patrol craft counters which respond to uh, situations when the searchlights of the harbor detect an SLC and the harbor defenses are represented by this display that you see here on the right side of the board and you just follow the instructions from top to bottom first you roll to see if the searchlights can detect any of the slcs then you roll for any underwater uh, british dive teams then you roll to see how the patrol craft respond to any surfaced or submerged slcs and there are instances where you have to roll for certain patrol craft to see how they're going to move. And then you have here how they attack surfaced and submerged SLCs. And finally, if in a scenario you have a shore base mortar, now it would be the time when the mortar attacks. And finally, you check to see if your SLC is in a hex with an anti-torpedo net to see whether the SLC can negotiate and go through the net or not. But in this game, the player does not only have to contend with the British harbor defenses, but also with the SLC itself. It is a very fragile piece of equipment and it breaks down uh, occasionally. And let's take a look at the SLC and how their, its systems work. You have in the front, the warhead, which is what the commandos are going to attach to a target ship to blow it up. And the warhead is functional if it has this red disc on its space. Otherwise, there's no warhead. 
And then the battery is represented by two discs. And to work, uh, the battery has to have at least one disc on this space. If both uh, battery discs are removed because uh, of malfunctions or damage, then the uh, SLC cannot move. And this uh, spells doom to uh, the participation of an SLC in a mission. You will probably have to scuttle the SLC and then roll to see if the operators make it back safely to Italy. And then here you have the ballast tank, which is important for the SLC to be able to uh, traverse the water uh, submerged. If the ballast tank is damaged, you can only uh, ride uh, the surface, which is very dangerous. And finally, you have the transmission, which allows the SLC to move, to make a full move. That is two spaces if submerged, or three spaces if surfaced. And these systems, as I stated before, will break down constantly through the game. So uh, you will be uh, required to make tough decisions as to whether to push forward with the SLC as it is, with any damage it may have, or stop to try to repair the damage. And of course, the more time you use to repair damage, the more likely the British defenses will detect the SLC. So let's take a look at the particular crews of the SLCs in this scenario. Here we see Birindelli and Pacagnini, the operators of SLC-1. And you see their card has a blue background, meaning this is their readied side. And while the operators are in a ready state, you receive two action points, which you can use to conduct various actions. And you see there that you receive one victory point if Birindelli and Pacagnini are captured at the end of the mission. And uh, this is so because this mission was so difficult that even if they surrender and are captured, you receive one victory point. Of course, they can get killed, in which case you don't receive that victory point. Now, operators have this readied side where they receive two action points, but if they receive a hit from the British defenses, we flip their card to their orange or stunned side. And uh, as you see there, if their turn comes up, they only have one action point while they are stunned. And if they receive another hit while stunned, they are killed in action. And you remove their card and the SLC from the board. And in addition to the systems of the SLC, the crew starts the game with breathing gear, that is operational, unless uh, a malfunction occurs, in which case you remove the disc and then their stamina decreases by one. And also their wetsuit, if fully operational, great, but if not, their stamina checks, instead of four or more to succeed in a stamina check, it's five or more which makes it more difficult. And here you see the particular skills that the crew has. They have a skill of one as to piloting, ops, repairs, and stamina. But throughout the missions, your crews can gain uh, experience points, which you can use to increase their skills, let's say, to a repair skill of two. And what that means is that when you conduct a repair skill, instead of rolling one die, which would be the case if the rating is one, you roll two and you select the higher result. But as to these two operators, all their skills here are one. Now we see the operators for SLC2, Tesei and Pedretti. And they have a plus one die roll modifier when they conduct repairs. And in addition, when you take a look at their skills, they have a two for repair skills. That means that they roll two dice during repair checks. And in addition, you add one to each of the dice rolled. So these guys are very good repairing things and that's a handy skill to have. And finally, we have the crew of SLC3, Duran de la Penne and Bianchi and they have a plus one die roll modifier in stamina checks 
And you see also here that their stamina skills are two. So they would roll two dice in stamina checks and you would add one to the dice rolled by these operators. So those are the three pairs of operators that will be in this mission. And we will play a full mission and we will go slowly explaining what we are doing at the beginning and then we will go faster as the game progresses. For now, I'll leave you with the intro for the playthrough series of By Stealth and Sea. This is Stuka Joe, signing off for now. Thanks for watching.